pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen, could you please call the roll? Ms. Wood? Here. Ms. Osler? Mr. DuPont? Yep. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Mazur? Here. And Mr. Bealey? Here. Thank you. Next item is the approval of minutes from the January 26, 2015 meeting. So moved. So moved. Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Show that to be unanimous. Thank you. Item number four on our agenda, Moorbrook Farm Agricultural Products Store requests site plan review for an agricultural store to be located on Spurwink Road. Mr. Chase. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as many board members, community members probably know this site, the Moorbrook Farm at the intersection of Black Point Road and Spurwink Road. There's an existing grandfathered farm stand on the site. The applicant is before the board to expand or uh, put an addition uh, to that building on their site, which in our ordinance will trigger from a farm stand into what is defined as an agricultural product store. Um, it's really a function of size more than anything else. Um, so that the a farm stand is allowed by right, so to speak. Um, but an agricultural product store requires planning board review and approval um, through the site plan review ordinance. So that is why the applicant is before you tonight. Um, you will receive uh, comments from planning staff as well as from Tom Gorrell, the town's traffic uh, peer review engineer, and Woodard Curran, our civil engineer uh, peer reviewer. In terms of staff comments, we've identified a couple of issues with regards to Internal, internal vehicular circul circulation and pedestrian uh, conflicts or the potential therefore, uh, landscaping and buffering of the parking field, lighting, and also in terms of uh, utilities, both the sanitary district and uh, potential for um, electrical connections. Um, by and large, those covered the, some of the points of the staff comments. Um, and I think I've hit the highlights, Mr. Chair. So with that, I turn it back to you. Thank you, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Allen. Great. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Lee Allen with Northeast Civil Solutions. I'm joined tonight by Stuart Harmon and family, um, the owners of the property and, and the store. Uh, we're proposing a 420 square foot building, which we um, use to primarily sell ice cream. It's an addition to the farm stand. The combination of those two puts us into this agricultural product store definition under the um, town ordinance. Uh, we're planning to expand the existing gravel parking by 12 spaces um, to a total of 20. Um, eight spaces are shown on the plan as impervious, basically grass uh, pavers, um, the, the cross-hatched uh, concrete pavers that allow grass to grow up in between. Um, the hope is that that grass will remain you know, fairly well defined as a uh, Hopefully, it's not torn up a lot. Um, we, we anticipate most of the parking to be right up in the front. Um, we plan on using the existing electrical service that services the farm stand. We're going to tie that into this building. And we're also proposing new municipal water and sewer connections into um, Route 77 or Sporowink Spur Road. From staff and peer review comments, um, just have some comments I'd like to make that we've kind of worked through some of these issues that were raised. Um, one of the questions had to do with a dumpster. We are not showing a dumpster on our site plan. There is a dumpster at the existing barn. Um, that's going to be used, so they will be hauling their trash uh, daily down to the barn, which is down over the hill. It's accessed off a driveway off of Black Point Road. Um, parking. We'd originally <coughs> proposed parking in front of the ice cream um, stand, the, the new building. We are now showing um, that not to be the case, um, and we will put in something, a uh, concrete planter or, or something, I, I think semi-permanent object is what Jay referred it to, to ensure that those spaces aren't um, taken up by vehicles to keep that um, safe to avoid the pedestrian conflict. Um, lighting. We've had our um, Sweeney Associates look at this again. 
Um, we've added house side shields to the lights, which basically are sheet metal on the back of the, the lights to avoid glare to the neighbors. Um, a new photometric plan was generated, and we'll obviously submit that to the town uh, in response to all these comments and any that we may generate tonight. But the result of the photometric plan is uh, there's zero foot candles going off the property, so it looks like we've got that to work. Um, one of the bigger concerns that was raised by Goral Palmer had to do with uh, potential pedestrian conflicts uh, crossing the road in, an, in the driveway. Um, Bill Bray has taken a look at this for us, and he issued us a memo today, and I will read um, one section of it just to give you a flavor of, of where he was coming from. Uh, this is in response to the pedestrian conflict at the intersection of Spurlink and Black Point Road. Automobile travel, and this is Bill Bray in response to that, automobile travel will, without question, be the principal mode of transportation used by patrons of the ice cream stand. The density of residential housing and seasonal homes within a reasonable walking distance of the proposed ice cream stand does not support high pedestrian travel. Notwithstanding, both Black Point Road and Spurwink Road are presently striped with four to six foot paved shoulders on both sides of the travelway, providing safe pedestrian refuge areas to and from the proposed ice cream stand. In my opinion, I, I believe uh, there isn't enough pedestrian traffic out there, and any pedestrian traffic is, is out there, the shoulders are, are more than adequate to uh, safely support them from the, uh, the automobiles traveling up and down Spurlink Road. Um, one other issue is the landscaping. Um, we had originally asked for a waiver on landscaping. We, we think with the farm setting that this kind of fits in um, and that there, there's not necessarily any additional landscaping needed. Uh, it was suggested that maybe we would look at a split rail fence with some low shrubs along the, the parking to screen from the travel way, but I might just add that the grades on Spurwink Road are about 52 to 50 in front of the ice cream stand. The grade of the parking area is roughly 48 and a half. Um, when you add the driver's eye, that's another three and a half feet on top of that. So in my opinion, you're looking right over the parking area anyway. If we put the split rail fence up, probably you'd be looking over that too. So I, I don't necessarily think that may be the solution, but willing to have any discussions with the board. Uh, with that, glad to turn it over to the board for any questions that you might have. Thank you. And before we begin board discussion, this is an item, it's the first time it's been on our agenda. So we have the opportunity for a public comment. If there's anyone who'd like to get up and say anything about this proposal, just ask you to keep it to five minutes. All right, seeing none, we will turn to the board then. And um, would you like to start, Nick? Uh, sure. Um, as far as are we, I just have a note of clarification. Are we asking them to provide a pedestrian way that's not currently there? Are we asking them to build a sidewalk, essentially, or a footpath? Or is that part of the ask here? I don't know if it rises to the level of an ask. I think if I can paraphrase what I think the staff had commented on is that they wanted to at least have it out there as a discussion point for the board to consider. But um, there's no sidewalk there currently. And I, I, I will say that, as I think everyone has seen, it's a, in the warmer months, it's a very popular jogging and biking corridor. Mm -hmm. So there may not be a lot of people walking, patrons walking to the site, but there are people on foot in that area. Okay. Um, I guess I'll start with um, the request for the waiver on the landscaping buffering. Um, I understand the concept of the open field you know, that's the view you want to see of the field in the farm stand. And I'm I'm okay with that if the rest of the board here feels like a split rail fence would be a nice addition. Um, I'm okay with that as well. But I don't I don't personally feel like you need to go overboard on landscaping considering the setting that you're you're trying to, to show. So I'm okay with that waiver ask. And then um, as far as the foot traffic uh it's if we're talking four to six feet in the breakdown lane, essentially, it sounds adequate enough for for me personally. I guess we'll see how the rest of the board feels about it, but um, other than that, I don't really have any other questions. Okay, thanks. Roger? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, as somebody who lives in that section of the town, I think it's going <coughs> to be a great addition. And uh, just kind of curious, what 
what hours are, are you thinking about um, having this open till in the evening? Probably 11 to 8. 11 to 8? Yeah. Okay. So is, that gonna, so is lighting going to be a big issue then? Uh, no, no, not, not really. That's what I was thinking, you know. Um, regarding pedestrian, it, it seems to me that when you look at where this is located, most of the homes are on that side of Black Point Road, and they're on that side of Spurwink. So um, I don't think pedestrian travel. I can see bikes, you know, bicycle, you know, coming from uh, that neighborhood across Black Point Road, using that, you know, coming in. I mean, I think it's going to be a great addition. Um, but I, I, would, I agree with uh, Nick. I would try and keep most of it as natural as possible. I mean, that's that's the ambiance of the whole the whole setup. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, I got a couple of things. Um, we, of course, the, the big concern from both the peer review staff and my own is full of traffic and pedestrian safety. And uh, I just want to make sure that we're all in the same wavelength as far as uh, how this thing is going to flow. So can you sort of elaborate a little further on that? And, and when you say flow, I mean, are we talking I mean, about enter, how they're going to enter, where the, where the actual window is going to be for the ice sure. cream? Sure. So traffic will either be coming basically south down on 77 or up Black Point. They'll enter here park here to take it. This is basically for all intents, it's a building with an overhang. It's probably six, I think it's six feet. They'll come up, there'll be order windows here. Um, they'll get the ice cream. Um, there'll be places to stand, sit out here, eat, get back in the car and come back out here and then either make a left or a right turn exiting the site. I, but I also agree with staff comments that to, there'd be some sort of parting and so forth to protect the pedestrians as they oh, over here at yeah. the order window. Yeah, yeah. We, we agree and that's we've made that revision. We had parking here. Um, you can't see but this area will be locked out so that you can't park there. Where's the nearest neighbors to this? I, I you know, I am familiar but just humor me. Uh, I believe at the corner, um, the camp catch is across the street, but I think the nearest residence is right off Marion Jordan. I think there's a doctor that lives at the intersection of Marion Jordan and N77. And that's probably about 500 feet away. 500 feet, okay. So there really isn't any, in, you know, impingement upon Correct. about us per se. Um, I agree with, with my fellow board members as far as the uh, landscaping is concerned. Uh, just a couple of technical things uh, from my own notes. Uh, Wooden Corn and Curran mentioned uh, providing uh, pre and post development figures. Yeah, I believe Jay got a memo today from them saying that that was all squared away. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, that was a fairly technical item and the applicant was able to provide those to our peer reviewer and he did have an opportunity to take a look at those and it's comfortable at this point that all those issues have been addressed. Okay, what about the uh, uh, water district? Has that all been, has that been discussed? They have the ability to serve. It's just a matter of, of going through the process and having them say, yep, it's okay, it's time to hook up, pay your fees, we'll have the inspectors out there when you hook up. And there was also, uh, I, I think, I a comment from staff that since there's going to be some digging up about utilities and how to, how to connect the utilities. Mm -hmm. What's the latest on that? Um, we're going to use the existing electrical service to the farm stand and piggyback off from that to to the uh, the new building. Okay. And is this going to be exclusively just an ice cream? Is there any other products that are going to be? Just ice cream? Just, just ice cream. The farm stand will continue to operate as it has and they'll sell the same, same products and it'll be ice cream in, in this building, yes. Interesting. Okay. Um, can I just make a point on, on that item? One of the requirements in our performance standards of the zoning ordinance for an ag product store, and this is an area where um, you know we had asked the applicant to sort of further elaborate on their application before it got to the board, is um, one of the requirements is for an ag product store, because really what this, as I mentioned before, this becomes the two buildings becoming one ag product store. Um, the requirement is that at least 
51% of the gross sales of the Ag Product Store need to be items that are um, produced uh, by the commercial agricultural activity, so the, the farm around it. And so the applicant has stated in their, in their submission that the ice cream they're going to be selling is sort of a value-added ice cream. They're going to be planting berries, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, and adding that into the ice cream and selling that, a value-added product. And in our zoning determination, that meets the intent of the Ag Product Store. So, um, you know, as I said before, one that I wanted to make that clear because, you know, it's not just going to be an ice cream stand where they're able to sell sort of a, a name brand ice cream, just establish any, you know, again, I don't necessarily want to name one, <laughs> but they can't just establish an ice cream stand for the sake of an ice cream stand in the RF district. Our RF district is really designed for principally two things, farming and rural residential. There's some other things scattered in there, but those are the two principal uses. So the intent behind the performance standards of the ag product stores to ensure that the commercial agricultural activity is still the driving force. And certainly, uh, you know, I think when the t town rezoned the RF district uh, four or five years ago, and we added in, uh, the committee and council added in a number of items to really identify what farming is becoming. It's these value-added type activities. So. Um, I just want to make that point clear that you know it's, it's not just your standard typical ice cream stand, but it is one that has a connection to the, the commercial agricultural activity that's occurring on site. Um, so. Is the ice cream going to be made on site, or is just the ingredients going to be added to it? It'll be mixed on site. didn't notice on, oh, uh, I'm sure, and I'll just point it out for the sake of conversation, that the access is from the DOT and not from the town? It's, that's, we need to pull a permit from the DOT when we do, before the contractor digs open the road to, to extend the water in the sewer. Yeah, so you're yeah. aware of that. Yeah. And uh, that has nothing to do with doing a preliminary? Right, no, I, exactly, we can do it. If the board's comfortable. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I think I said my piece. Thank you. Thank you. John? I'm good. Just happy to uh, see a business expand in Scarborough, uh, especially small business. All the other questions I'm happy with. All right. Mike? Thanks, Corey. Um, just a few questions. Already been asked much, uh, most of them. Uh, you said the hours of operation will be. You said 11, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m., and it's. Second week of June, roughly, to October 31st. Um, the reason I, I wanted to elaborate a little bit on that is because there's been some talk about the uh, pedestrian safety, et cetera, and I'm just wondering how that all plays after sunset. Um, I mean, most of the year, I mean, it's not until you get into the later fall that you start having, you know, darkness issues. Obviously, June, July, August, that's, that's not really a concern. Um, will there be any signage, additional signage? Yeah, other than other than the farms, I see a farm stand sign. Yeah, uh, there'll be a stop, you know, stop sign before you you leave the site. Any sign is announcing the new product that's available. Or? I, I believe that will come in a separate sign permit to to code enforcement. Okay. Um, how did you calculate um, the number of spaces? I mean, I I just want to get some wrap my arms around the fact that you know these ice cream stands they tend to generate a lot of a lot of uh, they have, they're popular, no doubt. Um, and I'm just wondering, is that going to be enough? Because I just hate to see w that pull and then having cars parked along the side of the road. I can. No, I, 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 I share your concern. A lot of this has to do with some recent projects I've done on other ice cream stands. Uh, I've done one in York. Um, I forget, there was another one I worked on. And what we did is we looked at basically in the ordinance there is a parking provision for takeout and I believe it's a minimum of 10 spaces. We looked at that, so we took a minimum of the 10 spaces plus empl two employees at maximum shift, and that's how we got the 12 new spots. Um, obviously, there's reconfiguration. There was eight spots there existing with the farm stand, so that's kind of the thinking behind it, and, and I think based on where we are, um, 
you know, this isn't uh, the dairy corner on on Route One. Right. Th this is down here. So I, I mean, that was a factor in it too, as, right. well, as well as kind of the traffic generation. Bill Bray and I had a discussion back and forth, and kind of threw that all together and said, you know, I think this feels right. Okay. I'm wondering if it might be prudent that after some uh, experience, whether it be a couple months or maybe next summer, uh, whether we have a uh, a way to look back and ensure that, in fact, the parking did serve all your needs and we didn't run into any of those issues. And if we did, is there room on that plan to add parking if Absolutely. that is the case? Absolutely. We could, you know, we could almost double the size of it if, if need be. I don't know if that can be a form of an additional condition, you know, mm -hmm. to just check back in September or October or whatever and see what the experience has been that way. Mm -hmm. um, Sure. Would you like to come right up to the podium? How are you doing? You have to remember now, the farm stand closes at 6 o'clock, so you've got two hours, okay? Uh, what used to come into the farm stand, you've got all that space open, so there will be, mm -hmm. there'll be adequate parking there. Okay. Well, that's comforting then. Yep. And I would think that this simple exercise of checking in September, October, about how it all went about would probably just be, okay. you know, a yep. simple exercise. Good to confirm what you're saying is true. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, all my colleagues uh, asked the same questions that I had and then, and then some. So I'm happy to see uh, something like this take place, certainly. And I, I would support waiving the uh, landscape uh, requirements as well so with, the, with the elevations that you stated. I don't see I'd rather look at the field and the openness. Best of luck to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, yeah, likewise, I think I've had my questions, to the extent I had any, pretty well answered. I don't really have any concerns. Um, based on um, what I've seen of the site and the applicant's explanation um, regarding the landscaping, I think I'm also okay with. Um, with not requiring any special um, extraordinary buffering or split rail fence or anything like that. Um, it is true that, at least for me, the, the fence you have as you drive that stretch and you approach that, at least coming down Black Point Road, is just sort of almost looking out over um, that landscape beyond the, the building there. So I think I'm fine with that. And I know that given this, this use and this operation, it's certainly in your interest to want to have it be as attractive as possible anyway. Um, and then likewise on, on pedestrian safety, um, I'm, I'm glad we had that that conversation. I, I think that um, at the end of the day that um, I'm fine with the shoulder there and, and the, the other me the measures that you've taken within the site for pedestrian safety as well. Um, and I think to try to require a sidewalk here would be a you know, proverbial sidewalk to nowhere, as much as I love sidewalks in general. Um, so um, given that, um, I, I think I'm prepared to put forward a motion. We have a, a motion that's prepared here for our consideration with a series of conditions. Um, there may be one or two that have, that have already been addressed through the most recent discussions and plan revisions or are in the process of being addressed. There are a couple that are, um, you know, pretty boilerplate given the, the nature of the of the request. Um, so I will move to approve the application of Stuart Harmon for the development of agricultural products store at the Moorbrook Farm with the following findings and conditions. Findings. Moorbrook Farm is located on an approximately 29-acre parcel in the rural farming zoning district. The site is located at the intersection of Black Point Road and Spurwink Road. The site is an active commercial agricultural site with a grandfathered non-conforming 576 square foot farm stand. The proposed addition of approximately 410 square feet to the farm stand activities will result in the site needing to comply with the performance standards for an agricultural product store as defined and described in the zoning ordinance. Upon reviewing the proposed addition, the Planning Board finds the proposal meets the performance standards for agricultural products store of the Zoning Ordinance and the Site Plan Review Ordinance criteria with the following conditions. 
Number one, in January of each year, the owner shall calculate and report to the Code Enforcement Office the percentage of gross retail sales attributed to off-premise products demonstrating that at least 51% of the gross retail sales are from products associated with the commercial agricultural use for the preceding calendar year. Number two, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall provide a revised site plan which modifies the following items in accordance with planning staff's memo and is further discussed during the board's deliberation. Yep. First, realign parking to accommodate customer waiting area in front of the structure. <coughs> Next, revise the lighting plan to provide additional shielding to the fixtures. Provide material details demonstrating that high quality siding will be utilized. Revise the utility plan to address the sanitary district's requirement and electrical connection configuration. I have one to add on that, but okay. I can do it as number five sure. if you'd like. Yeah, then I think that makes sense. Number three, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall provide evidence that permitting has been secured from the DOT for the street openings and from the sanitary district. Number four, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall pay traffic impact and peer review fees. Uh, the Chair's pleasure, I'll read my cryptic handwriting. Uh, Be my guest. As part of the annual reporting for the first year of business, the applicant shall provide the code office with a description of the functionality of the parking field to ensure adequacy. If issues with on-street parking is identified, the applicant uh, <laughs> shall address the issue with the board prior to reopening. Does that address the concern that yes. the board has raised? That works for me. So that is the motion. I'll second. We have a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? And I show that to be unanimous. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And good luck. Definitely good luck. I'll, I'll need to rewrite that. <laughs> and bring bring in an interpreter. I was waiting for you. No. No. First two minutes. Well, I can sometimes figure out. No, you're not going to figure this first out. Five-year-old everything. Is there a town planner's report? Uh, yeah, two items to report to the board. Um, one, just let board members know, a few months ago we uh, conducted a master plan review for Burn Village down the Dunstan area of town. They are have submitted for a pre-application review, so I would imagine they'll back, be back before the board within your next meeting or two. Um, and then just a reminder to board members that we are planning on conducting a workshop prior to our March 9th meeting. So we'll begin that at 6 p.m. and then move into our regular meeting at 7. Thank you, and thank you for thank you for organizing that workshop. Yep. Is there an administrative amendment report? Do not have anything to report. Meeting. All right. Any Please. planning board correspondence? None. Planning board comments. Yeah, I have one. Go ahead, Ron. Our committee, transportation committee, was postponed because of weather, so we will be meeting next week. Hopefully, there will be more snow. Okay. Anything else? Just me. I'll miss you guys for the next two months. I'll miss the next three meetings. We'll see you in May. Okay. We'll miss you. With that, I will move to adjourn. <laughs> second. We have a second. All in favor? <laughs> Good night. I spent more